Hello everybody, this is XB Walker again, and I am about to give you a tutorial on creating settlements, something that a lot of people seem to have trouble with will no longer be trouble because I am going to teach you. Alright, step one, we want to buy our settlement license. Watch my previous tutorials if you need information on using the market, but I'll run you through it one more time very quickly. We click on our flight center, then we go to the market, which is C. Then from there, we simply look for licenses. You'll notice that there are no licenses in the market I'm in, so we're going to go to All Market, and down here to Licenses, and here, <laughs> another English translation problem, the license for the name really just means rename license. Um, but anyway, we're looking for a multi-purpose settlement. Clicking on that, it's worth 100 gold. This is an NPC created item. There are no player created settlements, so we have to buy them at cost. Um, closest one is in Starlit Nargval, which is two miles to the north. Again, we can find that by just clicking on our mini map until we find Starlit Nargval. I gotta close the, gotta close that to do that. There it is, Starlit Nargval, and it's to the north eh, west. Anyway, let me go ahead and buy that right now. We're going to click on this, go to the market again, all market tab, um, licenses, and multi-purpose settlement. Also, always read the information before you buy something. Weight of this unit is 33,750. Now we're going to make our way over there to pick it up, so I'm going to buy. There is now one over in Starlit Nargval, and here we go. By the way, take a new balloon when you go to place settlements if you're fairly close to a city, because they do have enough capacity to carry settlements. You don't need to go buy yourself a giant balloon to do this. Uh, however, for mines and drilling platforms and virtually anything else, you definitely need a very large balloon. Here we are in my ship. And there we go to pick up our balloon. Again, I said in another tutorial that it's a very good idea to have a uh, automatic ship enhancement, which I broke my own rules by not having one on this ship. Let's see if we get lucky and there's one in Starlet. And there is not. Well, oh well, let's just hope I don't do anything stupid, right? By the way, in order to place a settlement, we're going to need two skills. We're going to need Planner to at least level 1, and you're going to need Exploration to at least level 1. Each level of expor Exploration increases um, the quality of the resource that you're searching for. Not the quality of you extracting it, because that doesn't change, but rather increases the quality that you're available to see. For example, my level is currently 8 out of 11, which means I can see 100% of stone, wood, food, iron, phlogiston, which is more or less coal, I'm a 75% sulprit, 50% mephrite, and 25% volcanic stone. Which means, even if I'm over a deposit that's 100% volcanic stone, um, I'm only going to see it as 25%, so I don't really know just how good that deposit is. That's the importance of the exploration skill. So you can take a chance and just land on a place with a low exploration level and hope for the best, but I recommend getting it to 2 or 3, which doesn't take too much time, maybe a day. Or of course you can just pay gold and fast track everything. Okay, next we're going to pick it up. We're going to go to our warehouse. There it is. In order to get it into our ship, we go um, docking port, hangar. There's our ship. Here it is floating. I'm going to click on the hold, and we're going to transfer this multi purpose settlement over. 
and you'll notice I only now have 7,400 free cargo weight because most of it is taken up by the settlement. By the way, if your ship, if your starter ship has a ton of ammo, you will also not be able to fit the starting settlement, so don't put 50,000 rounds on each gun. All right, here we go. We're going to take off. Speaking of guns, do bring weapons and ammo before you go and place a settlement because settlements are out of town and out of town are dragons. Pro tip, if I didn't say it in another video, go as high as humanly possible if you want to go fast. In my case, 4,000 is the flight ceiling of this balloon, so I'm going to ascend to 4,000. And to save time, I'm already going to start moving while I ascend. Give you a couple other training tips while we're moving. Um, to your right here, you can see this nifty looking gate. This is a, well, it's actually called a gate. What it does is it fast travels you from this gate to wherever the gate your sapphire is located. Uh, for example, let's look on the market, look up sapphires, and let's say I wanted to go to Citadel, which is way, by the way, I'm up here in Nargval, Citadel is way down here. That's about an hour and a half flight in this ship, maybe two hours, it's, it's very long. Um, I don't want to make that flight, so I'd rather just pay gold to get it. 60 gold for a single sapphire. What kind of jerk would sell them for that much? Oh yeah, it's me. <laughs> anyway, um, that's how I make my money. That's another tip for trading. Um, buy something for cheap in one place, sell it for a lot of money somewhere else. Okay, so I'm not going to actually buy that because I would just be paying myself. But you would take this crystal, you would fly to the gate, and you would activate the crystal in your inventory, or excuse me, the sapphire, and you would be almost instantaneously transported from that gate to the gate that your sapphire is listed for. It's very important that if you're in a big city, buy a handful of crystals, or sapphires, for that city so that you don't have to make the long trip back. With that, um, I will resume this once we're further out of town. Okay, folks, we are back. I literally had enough time to have a long conversation, get a bunch of work done, and go do a bio break, walk around the house, fold some laundry, do pretty much the entire life cycle <laughs> during the building of this base. It takes a long time. And by the way, when your flight center finishes, your wall continues to build. However, once the flight center's done, you can start building on your base. No need to wait for that. Okay, well, we are going to go down to here on build, and we are going to start building for the specialty of our base. One of the mistakes I made when I first started was to just try to build one of everything. I thought that that's what made a good base was to have everything. Unfortunately, it does not work that way. Bases have to be specialized. That's where, again, having a clan is very important or having a very high planner skill in putting buildings all over the map. Okay, so we're going to go to exploration from our flight center. Just to recap, we've got 82% timber, 16% food, and just nothing but crap for the rest. So we can make food and what is most important is that we can make timber. So first of all, let's get our farm down. Cost 602 boards, 84 iron, 336 timber with my particular skills. We have lots of those, lots of those, and lots of those. We're good. Oh, let's do this. Yeah, this looks like the most out of the way area that's not going to get in the way of the more important stuff. It's going to take me 10 minutes and 31 seconds to build that. Meantime, I can start building other things. I don't need a mine be because I don't have any iron here. However, I can 
place mines, advance them a level, and then use them to build sheet iron out of iron from another mine if I want to. Totally up to you. Uh, woodwork shop is where we do, well we can just read it here, in the woodworking shop of the first level timber is obtained from which the boards, <laughs> boy I love this translation, are produced. After upgrading you can also create plywood and charcoal. You see they call it charcoal here but it's not called charcoal in the game, it's called phlogiston. So I wonder if they're in the process of fixing some of the English. We're going to go ahead and place a few of these because this is going to be our woodworking settlement. Okay, as you can see my queue is now full. I can't plan any more buildings. There's two ways to go about this. We can let our queue tick down while we take off and go do other things. Maybe uh, go pick up some more supplies to build more buildings. Um, go kill some dragons. Whatever the case may be. Um, I am again going to show you how to fast track this. Click on your building. To the right here is a check mark saying that you can finish the task immediately for one gold. Most people would say that's a pretty good deal for people like me who are impatient. And again, because I'm doing a tutorial, I will do the fast track. Normally I would just let it go and I would go kill dragons or do something else to keep myself busy. Okay, those buildings are up and they're ready to go. Before I go any further, there's one other building that's fairly important for you, especially if you're in a clan or you have friends and that is going to be your warehouse. I recommend placing it close to your flight center simply for visibility and so that you don't have to think about where it is. We're gonna let that build. There are some other items which I can tell you about really quick. You've got your hangar, which is where you keep your Strex, also known as your fighters. Uh, Strex can defend your base in the event of an attack. You've got your forge shop, which is just a forge. This is where you build engines and I believe lower level guns at the first level. Arsenal shop is where you make rockets, machine gun charges, and bombs. Uh, basically ammunition. That's what your arsenal is. Your store is an actual store that you place on your settlement that allows you to sell things right out of your settlement or put in purchase orders and have them delivered to your settlement so that you don't have to go looking for things. This is something I did on our castle and it worked out really well. We got hundreds of thousands of delivery worth of timber and a bunch of other stuff without me having to travel all over the place to find the best deal. If, if you don't want to trade, make someone else do the job for you. Okay, last but not least and most important is your anti-aircraft platform. Again, if you're a new player, your PvP status only lasts for 30 days and then it's game on, you can be killed. So it's important to get this bad boy up as soon as possible. Uh, I haven't had too much experience with my base getting attacked, but using common sense, I would say spread out your anti-aircraft platforms so that they are not close to each other and cannot take splash damage from things like bombs. Oop, that last one didn't place. Hmm. Oh, obviously because I'm already doing three other things. That makes sense. Okay, so again, gonna cheat, gonna spend some gold here. It's not actually cheating, I'm just using that word. There we go. Anti-aircraft platforms are done. Let's put one more down for good measure because my PvP status is enabled and I need to be able to blow fools out of the sky if they think they're smart. Okay, my last one is down. And one other building I forgot to mention is the R&D building. This is where you can design and build Strek slash fighters. I'm not actually going to place that because I already have another place that does that. So now uh, let me just, I'm just going to let that platform build the old-fashioned way. I'm not in a hurry now. Um, by the way, you can click on your anti-air platform. 
you can click on the information panel. You'll notice that just like a ship, it does not come with guns and ammo. You need to drop guns and ammo on it. And we're going to wait till that finishes, and I will be right back. Okay, we are back, and we are out exploring right now. I'm in my new balloon, and I am going to find a place to settle down. So, using my little percentage sign here, or hitting the letter R, I do an exploration. According to my exploration, the area I'm directly above is 100% timber, 29% food, 13% ima, which is like oil, and 18% phlogiston, which is coal, pretty much. However, on my mini-map, there is no white box right here, so I can't just plop a settlement down beneath myself. I need to find a white box, and look at that, there just so happens to be one. Zoom out on my map a little, whoop, too much, and we're gonna make a line for that box, and run our exploration again. By the way, if we keep it open, it does not auto-update. We need to close it, rerun it, every time we want to explore, unfortunately. Again, hopefully that will be patched later, but as of the tutorial, it is not. Okay, we're just about over our spot, and you'll know when you're there, because, stand by, Ah, uh, see? Here you can set up a settlement with an area of 188. By the way, 188 is very large. That is a great size for a settlement. Um, they go anywhere from 60 I've seen, some even smaller, all the way up to, so far the biggest I've seen is about 200. This is a very big settlement. Okay, so this place looks like a great place to get timber not so good for food and pretty much worthless for these two materials here um, if you're starting with your first settlement I recommend focusing on timber and food because they are the base for everything else you do you need food to make timber you need timber to make food if you do it right you will make more food than you need to make timber and more timber than you need to make food I hope that makes sense so we're going to plop down right here. It's going to take a little while. In the meantime, I will do some explaining about production. When you place your building, it doesn't immediately start working. I made a huge mistake before. By the way, if you ever um, view the tutorial about Strex, I think it's tutorial number three, uh, or not Strex, Dragon Wings, which is tutorial number four, I can tell you a little story about how I lost my ship because <laughs> what I did was I placed a settlement I used my dragon wings like a fool and I tried to land on my settlement while it was still building I landed at it and I was in the settlement but I couldn't leave it because it was building so meanwhile my ship slowly floated away and it took me two days to get it back so yes don't fly out of your ship after you place a settlement and try to land on it just let the settlement build it will take some time we're going to back up a little bit because we're kind of missing our square. And I don't believe it matters where in the square you are because that whole square becomes your settlement, as you'll see in a moment. But just in case I'm wrong, I'm going to go right to the middle. By the way, you might notice... Um, a lot of the things I say sound like I'm not very sure. That's because this game has only been out for about four days, and we are all pretty much noobs, and we're all kind of learning as we go. I just happened to be one of the first ones who got in once they released it in the USA. So I'm the closest thing to a qualified teacher you've got. Okay, we are descending downward. We should be able to place the settlement now. You'll notice that over here, establish a settlement is lit up. It is good to go. I can place it at any time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on the button. Woo, there it goes. Fall into the earth. And it has 
landed. And my settlement is now building. That is a big settlement. That is an awesome find. <laughs> this may be a tutorial, but I'm definitely keeping this settlement. Feel free to come say hi to me. It's right outside of Nargval to the west, or to the east. Alright, we're going to continue to send while our settlement builds. Downward and downward we go. By the way, I have the settlement scale to level 6, which means I can place a total of 6 settlements. This is one of the most expensive skills in the game. It takes a very long time to train at upper levels. If I were to train this for 7 settlements, it could take me 11 days unless I wanted to foot about 10,000 gold, which I definitely will not be doing. Same with exploration skill. It's a very expensive skill up in the higher levels, but very important for level 1 through 3. Um, one reason that these are so expensive, particularly planner, is to keep players from not cheating, but from um, playing the system. The way governorship works in this game is the player who owns the most resource-rich territory in total in a region becomes the governor. For example, the governor of this region is someone named Afonka 12, which means he either has a clan that has many members who have territory in this region, or he owns many settlements in this region that have a high resource gather rate. Either way, he is now the governor of this region. And what happens as the governor, by the way, is if you become the governor of a region, there are good and there are bad things about it. The good thing about it is that you collect taxes on every single person who lives in your region. Uh, they don't just show up in one of your settlements. You actually have to literally go and collect taxes like King John and Robin Hood. <laughs> so good luck making friends as a governor. Um, the other cool thing is you can kick someone out of your region. Be very careful not to abuse this feature because you will find yourself hated very quickly. I'll give you an example. I am the governor of a certain region, which I will not name on here for fear of you trying to take over. But uh, if I want, I can click on a player, say this guy right here, Oods, I love the name, and down here I can set him to non grata, which means if he is in my territory, my guys can freely attack and kill him. Kind of like war decking someone in EVE Online if you're familiar with it, or putting a bounty on someone's head. Um, it might seem fun to take over a territory and do this to people, but you lose a lot of standing and you basically become a pirate. So be very cautious about uses, usage of this. If you become a governor, I, I really recommend you don't even do this ever. Another thing that is, well, something that's very bad about being a governor is if someone in your territory is killed by a pirate, you take a standing loss of 200 points because you failed to protect them as their governor. That's why it's very important that, well, in my opinion, that if you want to be a governor, you are a clan leader. Um, if you want to live under a governor you know will protect you, join that governor's clan. Very important. Uh, and also, you, as a governor, you will take a 50-point hit if someone is killed, I believe, by an NPC, um, a dragon, but don't quote me on that. There's actually a guide on Steam you can read. The English is not very good, so that was what I gathered from it. Okay, as you can see, our base is still building. For whatever reason, it's going quite slowly. I can tell you the reason right now, and yet again, I'm going to break my own personal rules and I'm going to fly out of my ship and land at the base so I can show you what's going on. Actually, what am I talking about? I don't need to do that. I can dock at the base. Um, I don't know why I forgot that. Anyway, um, you can dock here at your port, which instantly builds the moment you drop a base. You don't need to wait for it. Be cautious, though, as player multi-settlements, multi-purpose settlements, do not dock larger ships well. If you try to dock a large ship, 
to a multi-purpose settlement that hasn't been upgraded, it will take 5% ship damage. So do it, do it at your own risk. If you are going to do it, I recommend putting a crystal on your ship so that the crystal takes the damage instead of you. Because as I said earlier, repairing ships really, really sucks and it's not easy. It's usually easier to scrap them. Here we go. Gonna land at my settlement. And I am now docked. My settlement is still building. You'll notice that the health is ticking up from 0 to 2.81 million. Even multi-purpose settlements are pretty beefy. They're about as strong as your typical medium range ship. Okay. All right, so our settlement is building. By the way, if you want to make this go faster, it is possible to do. There is a skill for that. If I can remember it. Here we go. Builder speeds up the construction of buildings and reduce the cost of the process. What that really means is reduce the cost of uh, building a building. So if I want to build a farm, it's 20% less at level 3. 15% uh, less at level 2 and I think 5 or 10% at level 1. Also architect makes your buildings 25% stronger. They were repaired 35% faster. By the way your buildings do decay over time so this skill here is pretty cool. Makes your buildings a bit stronger and makes it so if you're gone for you know five or six days and you come back and you want to repair it it'll be that much quicker and and uh, a little bit less painful. Defense gives you the ability to add strength to your anti-air guns. Your AA guns are super important once your PvP status is enabled. Either through the skill of uh, the Marquis skill license, which I'll show in another tutorial for PvP, or uh, the end of your 30 day grace period. By the end of your 30 days, all your settlements should be beefed up with as much anti-air as you can fit. Because hostile takeovers is a thing. And also, if you want to build the best, absolute best extraction base and make lots of resources, you want to learn these skills underneath exploration. Extraction 3 gets you duration and cost of resource extraction is 20% less, meaning you extract them faster, uh, or sorry, extract them faster, and the resources to do that extraction are 20% less. So for example, making timber costs food, well it costs 20% less food with this, this at level three. Now down here we have planning, production of materials is 20% faster. As I understand that, I believe this is your uh, resources regenerating on your plot. Resource percentages do go down as you mine the land or cut the timber down or whatever. It's not constant. It does go down. And I've confirmed that through my clanmates here. They've all run into this issue. So I, someone correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe planning makes it so that those resources regenerate quicker. And of course, engineer is for producing engines and weapons a little bit faster. Really, in my opinion, this, this skill and this skill down here should be over here in the crafting tree, but that's just me. Okay, our base is gonna be taking a while, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pause this video and we will again resume once I've finished.